Macquarie Island is the only island in the world uplifted by organic crust caused by a collision of two large tectonic plates some 11 million years ago. The average temperature on the island is about 6 degrees Celsius and there are 320 days of rain, drizzle and snow. The strong westerly winds averaging 25 kilometers an hour every day and some gusts go up to 170 kilometers an hour. There are no trees on the island and this is due to the low temperature and just not enough sunshine. After the discovery of the island in 1810, sealing started to happen on the island. There were thousands, I believe thousands of elephant seals were killed to extract the oil to feed the European market for light oil. And when they ran out of seals, and there weren't enough seals anymore on the island, they turned onto the penguins to extract the oil. And I believe millions of penguins were killed in that period. But I would say the worst part was the killing of the fur seals for their fur. Some 190,000 fur seals were clubbed to death. And when I arrived in 1958, I was told there's a little colony on the end of North Head. And there wouldn't have been no more than 50 or so fur seals there. And the moment they saw me, they squealed and squeaked and ran off into the ocean. But the moment they saw a human being, that was it. In 2018, the first seal colony has grown back to 2000. The island is part of Tasmania since 1820 and was turned into a nature reserve in 1933 and a World Heritage Site in 1997 and today it is managed by the Tasmanian Parks and Wildlife Service. Sir Douglas Mawson, the great Australian explorer, arrived on the island in 1911 to establish a radio station, a link between there and the Antarctic continent where he was going to go on from there on. When he came back in 1914 to Australia, he became a very strong campaigner trying to stop the cruelty on the island. But it wasn't until 1933 that it was declared as a nature reserve. Macquarie Island was established as a research station in 1947 by the Australian government to study meteorology, geology, the upper atmosphere, and biology, showing the landing in the early days. The swell could be very, very dangerous. Now showing the landing and offloading of the equipment and supply in 1957-58. And we had to make use of calm conditions whenever they happened. They were very, very rare. I arrived in Australia at the age of 21 and I had no English knowledge and I changed from a tradesman over to a weather observer and at the age of 23 in 1958 saying goodbye to my mother I went to Macquarie Island.
during the Australian summer, Danish icebreakers were used to take Australian expeditions down south. The roaring 40s can be very, very rough. Bonding with people from all walks of life. Yes, that's me in the cowboy shirt. In the days when I was a smoker. To the left of me, the officer in charge. Behind me, a radio officer. To the right, the doctor. And the radio supervisor. Arriving at Macquarie Island. The main station is built on a small isthmus just below North Head. Everything that is supplied for the next 12 months had to be transported by army ducks while the Thaladan was staying well offshore. I remember when I arrived ashore, there was a bloke which was the Met OIC with a long beard and long scruffy hair in a bird cage, naked. And then the next person I met was a weather observer with a ponytail. And I thought to myself, my God, if that's what happened here after 12 months, I think I better go back to Australia. Right to left the weather team, Leon Fox, also known as the Polar Fox, office in charge Laurie Brooks, and myself. Being the International Geophysical Year, we released weather balloons to be tracked by radar up to about 30,000 metres. Showing North had the grave of an expeditioner who refused to be operated by the doctor, and his appendicitis, I believe, burst and he died. Another grave, this time on the plateau, from an expedition crossing the plateau, fell into a frozen lake and drowned. The remains of an old radio station used by Sir Douglas Mawson's men in 1911-14 on Wallace Hill, or North Head, and the wooden pulleys I collected on site were used to assist a flying fox to bring all the material to the top, and can be seen at the Mawson Hut replica at Hobart looking from North Head towards the plateau and the station against North Head. Here you are looking at Chippy's Church where I spent the first four or five months before the new sleeping quarters were built and moving into the new sleeping quarters was absolute luxury. I like to point out what our sleeping quarters looked like after some 50 years and the station in 2012 with five star facilities to the other end of the island on my way to Hurt Point the home of the Aurora physicist was going to spend most of the year down there offloading the supply for the Aurora physicist for the next 12 months at Hurt Point was a difficult a rather difficult operation as you can see the Thaladan in the background, a little tugboat had pulled our rubber pontoon within striking distance of the island. Two men had walked the island over two days to the Hurt Point section when we approached with our rubber pontoon loaded with fuel and other gear. Propelled rocket was used with a rope attached to it to shoot it to the beach. And the two people on the beach, when they received the rope, pulled it around a large rock and we pulled ourselves in along that rope till we got to the beach. Then we started offloading all the supply and the rubber one toon was pulled back by the little tugboat back to the ship in the distance and the same procedure happened again. As you could see it was rather difficult to pull the fuel drums up the beach and I was, when all was done I was sitting there emptying my boots which were full of water 
a visiting professor in biology from America sitting next to me and he said if we had a hill like this in America I'd soon be shifted. And of course a well-deserved rest and have a warm drink. After finishing at Hurt Point it was time to get back to the main base. Laurie Brooks inspecting a seal harem of about 200 females. And the beach master on its way to shore. Today you have mobile phones, television, iPads, in those days we shared our lives with the animal world and no harm was meant. In the old fashioned way it tracked seals migration long before modern technology of tracking by satellite. A skewer protecting his young. The Antarctic skewer in full action trying to get some of the seal milk. <coughs> or trying to lure the penguin off its nest whilst his partner dies from the air to steal the egg. Wild penguins near the nuggets on the bottom of the plateau making their way up a creek to get to the colony of about 60,000 penguins. At North Head, you find the ever inquisitive and at times attacking little rock hopper penguin. We call them the clowns of the penguins. Also home to the black brow albatross. whilst the Chen Tu penguins built their nest mostly on flats. On my way to Hurt Point going up Gadget Gully, also home to the beautiful Sully Albatross. I too managed to fall into a frozen lake but I got out again thank God and had to walk for two and a half to three hours soaking wet till I got to Green Gorge and now Green Gorge in 2012. Continuing along the shore to Hurt Point, passing a large King Penguin Rookery. But at some stage I had to climb back onto the plateau. The Hurt Point station lies on the other end of the island. Looking down to Hurt Point station from the plateau. The station where I spent the week. And I visited nearby, I believe the largest royal penguin rookery in the world. Well over a million and also the royal penguins only nest on Macquarie Island. To finish the year I visited with the biologist at Bow Bay, a wanderer albatross nest. For the first time we documented a grown chick still being fed. The span of the chick, if I remember rightly, was 11 foot and 3 inches. Our two night stay at a 5 star box and the five star in 2012. The 16 man expedition of 1958.
now call on David Pera to introduce the Macquarie Island Pioneer Expedition as 1948 to 59. Uh, just first of all, I'd like to pay tribute first to my wife because so much of what we've done is together. It's just not me. She's an equal in a filmmaking team. 1958, Horst Munsterman, who is, um, was a weather observer. Horst was a very keen uh, amateur photographer and filmmaker and um, Liz, inside the brochure under Horst's bio, or later in the brochure, I think, puts a link to his uh, YouTube 10 minute film, which he's made on his life on Macquarie. Well worth a visit, it's terrific. Horst. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to say hello to Bruce Cook and Doug Tweak which I probably haven't seen close up for the last 60 years. And it's nice to see them here today. My experience about Macquarie Island goes back, and I think I have to start from the beginning. I came to Australia when I was 21. I didn't speak one word of English. I was a tradesman. And two and a half years later, I had changed over to a weather observer, learned the language very fast because I thought that's the only way to get back at the Aussies who called me a bloody new Australian and I could swear back at them. And when I got to Macquarie Island, I made a very strange experience. It was all new to me. And you mentioned a while ago about the met man who liked the rabbits. Tony mentioned that. He happened to be in a cage, in a bird cage when we come ashore. Long beard and he was naked. And I thought to myself, my God, I, I see Phil Law's face still in front of me. He was disgusted. And a bit further down the track, there was a bloke walking along. He since passed away too, Bill Callis. He had here down the here. And I thought to myself, I'm going back to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stay here, they're all mad. <laughs> and going a bit further about Macquarie Island, you mentioned a while ago about Hurt Point, bringing all the stuff ashore. Uh, I still see this in front of me. Phil Law was all about photography, about making movies and because it was all publicity. And here he was, the, the rubber pontoon came ashore, we all raced it onto the rubber pontoon, get something, and Lim Macy got caught underneath the rubber pontoon. And Phil said, hang on, hang on, I'm filming this. You've got to stay underneath there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and after, after we were all done sitting ashore there, and we really were done, we worked so hard. I had an American observer sitting next to me, a professor of biology. He said to me, Harry, if we had a hill like this in America, it'd soon be shifted. <laughs> and I made the mistake too, falling into a lake on the way to the other end of the island, where the Aurora physicist was. I walked by myself and I crossed the lake and I fell in with a 60 kilo backpack on my back. And I got out of it and I walked two and a half hours soaking wet to Green Gorge. I'll never forget that. It was a horrible experience. And going back to Antarctica, I was lucky enough to go down to Mawson in 1960. And I can only say this country has been great to me. I made a, had a great experience experiencing Antarctica. Thank you very much.